Waist down tackling is set to change rugby forever, and I think this is a terrible idea for so many reasons. From what the mainstream media and world rugby are saying lately, the law change is here to stay. It's not just England. France and New Zealand are also expected to trial these law changes sometime this year. First, let's take a quick step back. Before I point out why this is without a doubt the worst, absolute worst change in rugby history. Following the Rugby Football Union's announcement of lowering the tackle height to waist and below, there was an immediate uproar from the rugby community. 75,000 online signatures in only a matter of hours. You, me, everyone, we all thought this announcement would be overturned, and that was really reinforced by the fact that everyone was making the biggest joke out of this announcement. Why this is so important for not just England rugby fans, but the entire rugby community, is because this little pilot project could scale out and really change the game moving forward. Now, since the announcement, I must admit, apologies have been given to the rugby community and fans about the announcement, but not an actual change on the ruling. Classic smoking mirrors. In fact, mainstream media and world rugby have started to push this narrative that it's scientifically proven, like every controversial announcement that finds itself on the back foot. I'm not saying that it's not endorsed by data, because really, you can make data look any way you want it to look, and this is a prime example. Now this right here is the one thing I want to point out to everyone. The only successful trial of actually using waist height before making this change came with the following stipulations. No simultaneous assist tackle, which means no two on one tackles, but that's not even the weirdest part, the outcomes. There was a decline in penalties for illegal tackles. It doesn't even specifically say head high tackles and reduction in suspected concussions. Why does that not say reduction in concussions? And then the third outcome, positive changes in shape of the game. I mean, all those three points are so objective as they are. I mean, surely this won't actually become a thing. I can't imagine watching rugby with waist down tackling only because I'd be way too worried about all the concussions that could occur. <laughs> in all seriousness though, I do love a chop tackle and I'm very much down for low tackles, but is anyone actually putting their rugby hat on before making decisions? This change would make malls pretty much non-existent because anyone chop tackling is definitely not instigating a maul. And when the line-out jumper lands, if the defending player dives in for a chop tackle, there is no way that maul is starting. And that actually sounds incredibly dangerous. Sure, the whole tackle fall to the ground process will be a bit more clean cut, but how confusing for players. Strictly low tackling laws to then engage in shoulder to shoulder battles in the ruck, which typically is where most of the red cards actually come from. Now with concussions reduced from a sports scientist trial, I'm wondering was there any data actually comparing the reduction in concussions versus overall injury? Surely it's common sense that everyone tackling low will actually increase the amount of grass cuts and dangerous tackles at the legs, and therefore injury risk for the ball carriers will actually increase. ACLs, MCLs, ankles, I'd love to see a data comparison. And how about for the tacklers, shoulders, fingers from having to wrap a much wider, faster moving body part? Now honestly, I know not all of you will agree with this statement, but personally, I would much rather get a concussion and spend a few weeks on the sidelines or even get forced into retirement than spend 9 months recovering from ACL and shoulder surgeries. There's also a lot of finger pointing happening towards the professional players. They aren't learning from yellow and red cards, the dangerous players continuing and it's creating a game that's not safe. I'm not sure how many times I have to say it. Hit them in the pocket, it really does work. It's been publicly proven here in rugby league in Australia for everyone to see. There are so many things that happen that make rugby a great game. The fact that every single moment of the game is a fight for possession is possibly what makes rugby union stand out amongst every other sport. There's no my turn, your turn to our game. But this change will take out so many valuable skills and so many of those contests in rugby. Think about it. If you run with the ball under your arm, you don't need to protect the ball tightly anymore. You won't need to worry about the ball being stripped if everyone has to go low. The offload will become so prevalent across every match and honestly you can expect to see the ball move a lot more with carries close to the breakdown usually only ever making meters from high tacklers that will be completely out of the game. Now this sounds like it may make the game more exciting to watch but then you have to remember there'll be a definite spike in penalties and seriously that's the last thing rugby needs more borderline penalties and more controversial decisions. Across all of this, the one thing that is constantly overlooked is the ball carrier's running high. I certainly was always taught to run low with the ball and I'm sure this is a really common skill that is coached across every level of rugby. 
but the window to make a legal tackle now is really, really slim. Think about it, a ball carrier running towards you, all you can see is their head and their shoulders and somewhere way behind that is their legs. You now have to put your head in the firing line to get to the ball carrier's knees to make a legal tackle. And how the hell are you supposed to stop a one meter pick and drive if you can't contact the upper body? When playing rugby, every time you run too low, the defending player will usually just throw you straight into the ground and have a crack at the pilfer. It just doesn't sound possible to even navigate all these different scenarios that happen in a game of rugby. Also, what happens if the ball carrier decides to drop the shoulder? The defender has no control over this, and with so many referees varying in experience and interpretations, this can't and won't end well. The only option would be to take out the bump. One of rugby's greatest ball carrying skills, Jonah Lomu, Julian Sarveo, Rennie Ranger, made their names off bumping off defenders. So basically the parts of the game we could be losing with this change. The maul, the strip, the bump, skilled offloads, two-man tackles, pick and drive. Not to mention the chance of more broken bodies, more penalties. I'm telling you now, this change will not make the game safer and it definitely won't make it more entertaining. I really hope common sense can prevail, please. Just increase the punishment. We all want a safer game. And at the professional level, just find the players who make head contact. It doesn't need to completely overhaul our game. If you're worried about being sued in court later down the track, pull rank, make everyone sign a disclaimer and put in significant processes for players who receive a concussion. Even if it's something insanely strict, it's better than the change that's on the cards at the moment. Don't let the game get destroyed. Share this with your friends if you agree with some of the points I've made. We really need to do everything we can to raise awareness. I feel like this needs more attention. Let me know if I've missed anything and thanks for watching.